Well, it's good to be here. You know, when Ray asked me to speak, I took it he asked me to speak, not preach. Because <laughs> just like he said, I'm not a preacher. But I love to share the Word of God. Before we get started, I would like to go to the Lord in prayer, though. So let's pray. Father, we do thank you again for this wonderful day you've given us. Lord, this is a day that you've made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we just praise you for the people that have been here, for the words that have been spoken. And Father, we pray that it didn't fall on deaf ears. Father, we love you, and we worship you, and we praise you each and every day. And Lord, we just thank you for the words you're going to give me to speak. And we ask a blessing on them. And Lord, we thank you again for all you do for us in each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to say a little bit before I get started. A lot of you know that I had an operation that today, one year ago, I didn't know when I ate supper that I wouldn't be eating another solid meal for six months. I had cancer on my tongue. They had to put a robot in my mouth and operate for three and a half hours. And then they spent the next six hours cutting my throat, getting the cancer out of it. They told me I wouldn't be able to talk. They told me I wouldn't be able to raise my arms when I come out of surgery. When my wife came back to see me, I talked to her and I raised my hands over my head. That's right. That tells you what kind of God we serve. There was a, we had started this ministry and when I had this surgery, I couldn't talk real good after I had the surgery because it was on my tongue. And let me tell you, you don't never want to have your tongue messed with. <laughs> Not only does it keep you from eating, like you want to, but it also kills your taste buds. And they have to grow back. And while they're growing back, guess what? You can't eat nothing spicy. So I've had kind of a time getting back used to eating. I've had to learn how to eat all over again. I'm 68 years old and I had to learn how to eat again. That's hard to believe. But if you don't eat for six months, believe me, you have to learn how to eat again. And it's been a challenge. But we over it. I would like to say that my wife and I have this ministry called 3 in 1 Ministries. We have a service every Sunday night at 6 o'clock at the Living Water Coffee House in Luverne, Alabama. It is on Facebook Live every Sunday night at 6 o'clock. So you can tune in to it if you can't be there. We'd love for you to listen. Hopefully you'll get something out of it. Now, all the preachers that are preached today, I can tell you, have done an awesome job. They've all talked a little bit about time and what we do with our time. And what time is it? Well, what I'm going to read to you today comes out of the book of Hosea. i got three verses I want to read. And I want to take one each one of them at a time. But I want you to listen to what these verses have to say. I probably won't take that long, but it's got a good message to it. A little bit more about our ministry, though, before I get started. We don't only just have a church service, but we also do some other things. We have a grief counseling session that's held every... First and third. Second. First and third. Every first and third Thursday night at 6.30. Hosted by Best Judy Peoples. And it's a good thing if you've got something that you're grieving and you need some help with it. She is a good lady to help you with it. We also have a ministry called One Hope for Battered Women. It's held on the last Thursday of every, Thursday of, of every month. At, and all this is held at the Living Water Coffee House in Luverne. It's on Main Street, right there at the Main Red Light. It's not hard to find. 
and we'd love for you to attend any of it if you can. We also have a, we call it the Living Water Coffee House because that's what it is, a coffee house. We're open every morning, usually Monday through Saturday, except for Thursday, unless I've got a doctor's appointment. Hopefully those are all fixing to end here soon. But you're welcome to come and visit with us anytime during the morning. We'd love to have you. Now, to get to God's Word. In Hosea, let me say something about the prophets of the Old Testament first. You know, they didn't have friends. You know, I hate to say it, but you look around out here today and we've got, we've got people that are friends. We might not even know you personally, but because you're here, you're a friend. These prophets that preached in the Old Testament are the that had to tell the people what to do, they didn't have friends. Why? Because they told the people what they didn't want to hear. Did you get that? They told them what they didn't want to hear. Too many churches today are telling people what they want to hear and not what the truth of God's Word says. But in Hosea chapter 9, verse 5, it asks a question. Listen to this question. What will you do on the solemn day, on the day of the feast of the Lord? I'll say that again. What will you do on the solemn day, on the day of the feast of the Lord? What are you going to be doing when the Lord blows that whistle? What are you going to be doing before that day? Is more the question. Are you getting ready? Are you ready? Are you seeing that all your family is ready? Are you seeing that all your friends are ready? You know, too many churches today, and I've heard more than one say, we're a church without walls. Well, a church without walls don't have walls. But yet still, most of the people you see is in a church with a building with walls on it. You don't see people outside those walls. Well, that's where it's at. One thing Ray asked me, he said, I want you to get as many of your biker friends here as you can because we have a biker ministry. That's what our ministry is. Well, guess what? We, got to, we had the CMA here. They're a good Christian group. I love them. I love to see them every time we go to Thunder Beach or any motorcycle rally, rally that there is. But you don't get bikers to something like this. You get bikers to a poker run. You get bikers to a big rally. So what do we have to do? We have to show up where they at. That's right. What do you have to do to reach the people you need to reach? You have to show up where they're at. So what are you going to be doing between now and when the Lord blows that trumpet? What are you going to be doing to see that the things are done that need to be done. And then in Hosea 10, 12, it tells us what to do. It says, Sow for yourselves in loving kindness. Reap according to loving kindness. And now this part. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. Break up your fallow ground. Break up that everyday common thing that you like to do. Start doing something different. Start doing something new. You know, when a farmer plants a field, he can't just go out there and throw the seed on the ground. He has to go out there and work it. If we don't plant seeds for the Lord, guess what? We got to go out there and work it. We can't just let it say, here it is, take it. We can't depend on a church to reach the center anymore. Too many churches have nothing but Christians or so-called Christians in them. They don't have that many centers in them anymore. I would, I would venture to say any church you walk into in Prince Charles County today, if you ask most of the people in there, are you saved? I would, I would venture to say that at least 97% of them would say, yes, I am. 
So a preacher is preaching to a group of saved people. Now is that preacher telling these saved people what they're doing right? I'm afraid not. Again, these prophets in the Old Testament, they didn't have friends. Why? Because they told people what they didn't want to hear. When I was growing up, we'd go to revival. It wouldn't be one week. It would be at least two weeks. We didn't have air conditioning. We didn't have padded pews. We were in a church where the windows could open up, and of course revivals were during the summer. And these revivals would be so packed with people, there would be people standing outside the church listening to the sermon. Why? Because they were hearing what they needed to hear. They were hearing a message that told them what they were doing wrong and what they needed to do right. Too many preachers today don't preach a message that lets people know that they're doing something wrong. Too many churches today want to compromise the Word of God and tell people it's okay if you go out on Saturday night and party and come to church on Sunday morning. You'll be all right. No, you won't. If that trumpet blows Saturday night while you're in that beer joint or in that Whatever you at, guess what? You probably ain't gonna make it. You know, again, look back at what that first verse said. What are you gonna be doing when God blows that trumpet? What are you gonna be doing when He calls His church home? You gonna be at a ball game? You know this this virus thing. <laughs> I think everybody's tired of it. I think everybody's tired of hearing. Wear a mask. Everybody's tired of hearing the new normal. But you know this virus thing you thought might have woke some people up. Why? It cut out sports. It cut out restaurants. It cut out any gathering of any people whatsoever. Guess what? People had to learn how to feed themselves again. Just like I do. People had to learn how to eat food from their house rather than going to a restaurant. But now that they're opening back up, guess what? The restaurants are filling back up. Now another thing this did for the restaurants, it allowed all those people that are working in these restaurants to go to church if they wanted to, if the church was open. Now how many churches closed because of this? A lot of them. Should they have closed? No. The service that we have at our church never stopped. Now, I'm not going to say we have a ton of people come visit us on, on Sunday night. And we have it on Sunday night because so many churches don't have service on Sunday night. But we have people to come. And while this virus was going on, we didn't stop it. There were some other churches in, in, in the county that didn't stop their services. Why? Because they knew that God would take care of them. You know, this virus has put fear in the hearts of a lot of people. And guess what? That fear is not from God. That fear is from Satan. Amen. Satan wants you to be afraid of this virus, and you shouldn't be. But we should be doing the things that God wants us to do. We need to get out of our comfort zone and break up the file of ground that's in front of us to reach those people that we come in contact with every day. You know, Elijah was one of those prophets that thought he was all alone. He ran off and hid because Jezebel was going to kill him, he thought. He said, I'm all by myself. I ain't got nobody else. But what did the Lord come to him and tell him? No, I got 7,000 more. He had to tell him something different. And guess what? If you get out and start working for the Lord and talking to people, you will find out that there's people out there that want to hear what you've got to say. There's people out there that want to know that there's somebody else besides me that believes in the Lord and wants to share the gospel of Christ. And you never know where it's going to happen. You never know when you're going to see it. And in, in Hosea 14.10, it says, Who is wise and will understand these things? It asks another question. Who is wise and will understand what's being said in the Word of God? 
Do we take the time to really look at it and read it and study it? Or do we just open it up or just take the Bible with us to church on Sunday morning? You know, I've been to churches where people don't even take Bibles in anymore. And the first time I saw it, well, the first time I went in that church, I went in with the Bible and I felt like I was a stranger because I was going in with a Bible and nobody else had one. <laughs> Why? Because they put the scripture up on the screen. You don't need your Bible. Well, guess what? That just means people ain't opening their Bibles at home if they don't bring it to church. So, who is going to understand what these things say if you don't have somebody to teach and preach what the Word of God says? If you don't have somebody to reach out to those who aren't going to set a foot inside the walls of a church. I know people out there that says they'll never go to another church because they was hurt in a church. Well, these people are the people that need to be reached outside of the church. These are the people that need to be reached so that they can get the Lord back in their life. And I know one person in particular that can quote the Bible front to back, but he will not set foot in a church because he was hurt in a church. Does that mean he don't know the Lord? Well, he's bound to know him if he knows the word back and forth. But is he saved? Does he have Jesus working in his life? And then the rest of this verse says, For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just, the just will walk in them. But the transgressors will fall there. That lets you know, for those of us who want to stay strong, to plot that course, to, 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 to make it to the end, God's going to be there for us. We're going to get to walk with Him. But for those who turn their back on Him, for those that just want to take it one day at a time and that Sunday, they're probably not going to make it. They're going to fall. And when I say fall, that means they're going to fall forever. Because when you don't make it to heaven, you are falling in eternity in heaven. You never stop falling. You can't catch yourself. So think about that. If you don't know Jesus today, you need to. You need to know him as your personal Savior, and it's not hard. All you got to do is ask him in your heart, and he'll, he'll come. But please take this as I've said and, and think about it. Again, I don't consider myself a preacher. I'm more, I consider myself more of a teacher because I love to study the Word of God and I love to let people know what the Lord tells me. And whenever I speak, it's coming from what God told me and not what I think of myself because if I had to think of it myself, you wouldn't ever hear me say a word. I was told... In the first business I was in, I was an introvert. You know what an introvert is? Somebody that don't speak to nobody. Well, I'm standing up here in front of all y'all and don't know how to speak without no problem. But, and you say, you're not nervous? Yeah, I'm scared to death. <laughs> but that don't matter. Why? Because I'm working for God. And when God's got you in his hands and you're working for God, you don't have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to fear. Not even the COVID-19 virus. I went to Sturgis, around 200,000 200, bikers, about three weeks ago. Was milling in with all of them. Come home, had to go have a procedure done. And before I had this procedure done, the doctors told me, says, you got to have a COVID test. I said, okay. Well, after going to Sturgis and having that COVID test, I said, we're going to have a problem. Guess what? I tested negative. I have never put on a mask unless I absolutely had to. I go in all the stores in Luverne without one on. I always have. Now in Montgomery, the stores I go in up there, they make you put one on. But as soon as I get in there, I take it off. Because they can't make you keep it on when you get inside. I know people that have followed these COVID virus to a T. They wore the mask. They kept six feet away from people. And guess what? They got the virus. So that lets you know that all the stuff that you hear is not true. Yes, we need to take precautions. 
It don't hurt to wash your hands a hundred times a day. It don't hurt to do certain things. And if, and if you're afraid you're going to catch something and want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Nothing wrong with that. I worked with a guy in the post office in Montgomery, and this has been probably seven or eight years ago. This guy wore a mask to work every day. He wore it all day long. And there wasn't no virus back then. He just didn't want to catch nothing from nobody else. <laughs> so, you know, you can depend on God to take care of you, and I've had to do that this past year. God has done so much for me in this past year, it's unreal. He will do things for you and show you things. One of the biggest things he's done for me is slowed me down. Let me tell you. You can get to moving too fast in your life. You need to take time and enjoy it. You need to take time and know what's around you. You need to take time with the Lord. He's taught me how to eat and enjoy food rather than swallowing it whole. One reason because I can't swallow that good. <laughs> but it makes a difference. But the biggest thing he's taught me is that he takes care of me. You know, I had some awesome doctors. The surgeon that I had was an awesome man. But the greatest surgeon I had was God. I come through that surgery with it after first bit of pain. I was only in the hospital for three days. And when I come home is when the bad part started. I had to have 33 radiation treatments, both sides of my neck, and three chemo treatments. Chemo treatments wasn't that bad, but the radiation might have gotten me. I begged for them to quit doing the radiation. That's how bad it was. But God still took care of us. I mean, he took care of me. Ray's telling me I got a hush. I'm going to tell him that. I told him he was running ahead of him schedule so I could talk as long as I wanted to. <laughs> but I just want y'all to know that we got a good God. We got a big God that takes care of everything. Listen to what this word said. What are you going to be doing on the day that trumpet blows? Are you going to be ready? All you got to do is show the love of God. That's all he asked us to do is to share his love. So please, when you leave this place today, go share the love of God with somebody. And I thank you. And I'll let Ray have it. <laughs>